Okay, uh, I'm going to say in a future slide that I'm an anti art enthusiast. For those who don't know what that is, this is a very cheesy example of anti art. And I'll just move briskly along. Uh, yeah, I'm moving along. And because I think trigger warnings need to be made fun of, like boilerplate legal language, I included a fake trigger warning in this and probably will in all future presentations. Uh, this talk was designed to offend the following groups. People who use weak passwords. Users of weak hashing algorithms. AMD GPU fanboys. No! Yes! <laughs> Bitcoin collectors. Oh. John users and developers. You have been warned. And I'll probably make fun of some other groups while I'm up here, but they're just going to have to deal with it. It's like John the Ripper? <laughs> yes. Actually, John is John the Ripper. Development died of it pretty much as soon as Hashcat became a thing. Like, developers just gave up on it just about. So, uh, yeah, we make fun of John. It's like a regular joke on IRC. Oh, a little about me. I'm a Hashcat beta tester. In the course of uh, doing, this pre uh, doing the research that led, up, that led up to this presentation, I actually found a couple of bugs. And Adam, the main developer, was like, here. Become a beta tester. You're finding stuff that we should have found on our own, but let's have more eyeballs at the problem. Uh, I also run a Tor Relay and a few bridges. If you were in the XMPP talk earlier, show of hands. Yes, Team XMPP is here. Uh, you already heard about that. Uh, I am not affiliated with the NSA. Uh, that is not some kind of weird double bluff. Uh, I, apparently, they're more afraid of me than I am of them because I'm also the speaker director here, and I emailed a guy who works for the NSA who was lined up, and they pretty much told him he can't come because my handle is NSA key and my email address is root at a big ISP.com. And, and NSA types are programmed at the factory to let their bowels loose at the slightest provocation. <laughs> I told you I'd make fun of other uh, subcultures. That's why uh, speaking of uh, uh, spooks and their uh, enablers and all of that, I trolled 20 committee pretty hard, and he actually told me on Twitter that I'm, he thinks I'm a Kremlin troll. Uh, I don't work for anybody when I do trolling. I just do it on my own. <laughs> I don't think you can actually get paid for that. If, if anyone knows where I can get a trolling job, let me know. <laughs> Uh, this is the tell them what you're going to tell them slide. Uh, I'm just going to go with the basics of why you would bother doing this and generally how. Uh, most of this is benchmarked. I'm just going to kind of brisk through that because nobody really wants to look at my ANSI tables except like data geeks. Uh, and, you, and you can download these slides later, but I'm on a timetable. Uh, then I'll do some analysis, take any questions, and then this is, this is the scary slide. Oh, uh, these, these are, okay, bat, I, I have some explanation to do. Battlefield is uh, the Battlefield Heroes dump that LulzSec released in like 2011. I uh, actually did all my testing on that. I figured at the time it was like three years old. There's no chance anyone was going to get mad if I like found new passwords and put them all on a bonus slide at the end. I didn't, so there isn't a bonus slide. Lizard Squad is from the uh, Lizard Stressor Booter. Uh, that got leaked uh, last year. Well, early this year, what, like in January of this year, actually. And they were idiots and stored all their passes in plain text. Yeah, people still do that. Uh, 2011 through 2014 is the uh, top 10 from Splash Data's lists. They published the uh, top 25 most uh, common passwords. And as my uh, little asterisk at the bottom states, this is this all looks terrifying, I know, but only about, this is only like the dumbest one percent of any given database. Like, the, you have a class of losers. That's a loser with a U, and they will they will use things like one two three four five six and password. Uh, everyone else is slightly more intelligent but most of them aren't good enough. And that's what the rest of this presentation is about. Oh, let's go, let's uh, talk about why the hell anyone would bother doing any of this. 
oh, there's uh, security research, whether it's you're doing it for your company internally, like uh, Dagmar, our next speaker, did, and we'll talk about that later, or externally, like if it's a pen test engagement or anything like that. Uh, there's a guy who writes for Ars Technica named Nate Anderson who decided, hey, I'm going to write an article about my experience getting Hashcat running, and that's how I became a password tracker. There are some hilarious screw-ups he committed that a lot of people would probably commit without if they didn't read his article, but he covers a, a lot of good ground. And then uh, there is uh, password recovery, which is basically geared for law enforcement. Uh, if there are any cops in the room, I'm not asking for a show of hands or anything. You do not need any back doors, front doors, uh, arrangements, legal frameworks, or any of that. Just brute force it like everybody else. That's just my inner crypto anarchist coming out. Moving right along. The bad reasons. This is one of my favorite slides. There's account hijacking, mostly through password reuse. So, some idiot will use the same password for their email that they will for everything else, and then it's just trivial to own them. Uh, breaking into a uh, protected Wi-Fi. Uh, you can actually take a PCAP and feed it to Hashcat, and yeah, that, that's a thing. And then my personal favorite, RMing script kitties, which really just ties into account theft. And if you're doing, if you're using Hashcat to RM script kitties, you're pretty much the internet's version of the Punisher, and we have zero problems. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing the public service. Okay, uh, this is stuff I got yelled at uh, because I didn't include it the first time around. Uh, what is a password hash? Basically, it's a one-way uh, crypto function. Uh, in this situation, it's just used to store passwords instead of just having plain text like the lizard stressor idiots. Uh, basically, the whole idea is if the uh, database gets grabbed, then the passes are just trivially uh, reusable, and it buys your users a little bit of time to change your passes. Unless you're really stupid and use something like unsalted MB5 or something equally ridiculous. All right, uh, this slide I always trip up on. Uh, unsalted is just like straight up. You can echo uh, a string into MD5 some for those of you who are Linux users. And yeah, that's just not any good at all. Uh, that sort of behavior was acceptable back in the 70s. People still do it. Don't do it. Uh, salting uh, started to become a thing uh, I don't, I don't even remember when, but rainbow tables were uh, designed uh, basically just to pre-compute a bunch of hashes and then instead of wasting CPU time because nobody used video cards back then, you could just store a bunch of MD5s in their plain text equivalents and shift the problem from uh, being CPU bound to being I.O. bound. Uh, rainbow tables uh, kind of got thwarted by salts, which uh, from a low-level standpoint, you have a string of text that gets either prepended or appended to the password and then fed into the, uh, whatever you're logging into. And that just really ruins rainbow tables because then they have to generate a rainbow table to go with each salt. Uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the better algorithms use salting and they also let you adjust how many times the algorithm runs before you get before you get to the correct hash, which is really great. Uh, Bcrypt, Scrypt, and Crypt uh, are uh, three of the better ones for that. There's another one that's like an alpha, it's like PBWKDF2. I'm sure someone in the Hashcat channel will watch this video and be like, hey, you got the algorithm name wrong, but oh well, don't use it. There's too many bad implementations. Uh, I have some examples that are all uh, colored up on the next slide. Uh, if you see, uh, okay, like light blue, that's just the uh, actual hash itself. Uh, the bright green is the uh, salt. And where I have uh, the uh, red 08, that is actually where you can adjust the uh, number of iterations. Now, that is actually uh, an exponent. Uh, that actually runs 256 times. If you bump it up to 09, it would run 512 times and so on. And all of these actually work out the password. Oh, and in case anyone is uh, going to ask later, 
the uh, standard for beat trip these days is a work count of 12. All right, now that I've gotten all of the newbie stuff out of the way, I can talk about why I'm actually here. Uh, Hashcat's pretty much an offline password cracker. Uh, just like plain Jane Hashcat uses CPUs, and by offline password cracking, no, you're not going to use the brute force your ex's Facebook login. People actually ask that, I just feel like telling it in case any of you actually go download it, and you don't have to ask that question and get banned or kicked banned or you know, made fun of or whatever. Uh, OCL Hashcat is the AMD version for uh, graphics cards, and CUDA Hashcat is the NVIDIA version. Uh, uh, the uh, Open Compute Language version, uh, NVIDIA's implementation of it is terrible. That's probably on purpose because they're pushing CUDA, so there are thus there are two binaries. Uh, I think Hashcat now supports over 150, but 140 is still, you know, it's still more than 140, so I didn't even bother changing that. And if anybody feels like scaling up, you can build out a club, you can build out a single cluster of up to 128 GPUs. <laughs> if, you have, if you have the electricity to do it, and yeah, you can, you can do that. The software doesn't care. Even though the title of uh, the talk is Hashcat, which mostly has to do with the fact that I couldn't fit uh, my original slide the way it was presented in 80 by 25 characters, we're only going to pretty much talk about the GPU versions because going with the CPU version is just incredibly slow by comparison. Which brings me to my next point. Uh, this is pretty much a joke. Um, if any, has anyone seen uh, Black Hat, the movie? Show of hands. Only one. Okay, the rest of you, you didn't miss a damn thing. <laughs> Seriously, it, I, almost, I almost went to sleep. But the only reason I cared about that movie was because of this little infographic here that you see on the projector. This, has, this really has no basis in reality. This may have been applicable in 1993, maybe. I could probably ask some old, I could probably ask some graybeards and get some more knowledge on that. But that's just a guess. The, I actually uh, hashed all of these in uh, MD5 and just fed one of the basic rule sets to them and cracked them all in under a second. It took, lo it took longer to get Hashcat spun up than it did to work. It was kind of pathetic. All right, now that was, I, I know that was full of snark, but the real reason is GPUs have lots of little dumb cores, uh, well, just on an architectural level, but CPUs have uh, uh, fewer, more complicated cores. Crypto functions really can be broken out across lots of dumb little cores, and that's where the speed gain is. To give a real world, uh, uh, a real world, a uh, real world example, I don't have enough caffeine. Can someone get me? Uh, yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyways, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> All right. Uh, to give uh, to give an example, I've got an uh, an FX eighty three fifty that'll do MD five do like six million uh, tries per second with MD five, but I'll get anywhere from two hundred to four hundred million tries per second with my uh, cheesy video card that's really not adequate for the job. That's uh, it's inadequate, but it's still vastly better than my CPU. Oh. I'm going to uh, blitz through hardware because I don't really want to focus on that. Unix Ninja did a fantastic write-up. Uh, there's also uh, a talk by Evil Mog at DerbyCon. He's got this hilarious hat and he's in pajamas and he's talking about uh, accidentally setting rigs on fire. It, 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 it's glorious. It, it's mostly a rant, which is kind of hard to avoid with passwords talks, but it, it's, it's definitely worth watching. I think it's about a half hour. Uh, but I will touch on this. Uh, the, one, the card that's labeled pass is what we call a reference design card. That's a, basically what you would find on the website. Now these are actually the same card once you pop the heat sink off and fan off. It's just that uh, in this case, I think, yeah, it's EVGA. They took the fan off and put a cheap one on it. And there's like a, a $50 difference on, like I think it was Newegg or Amazon. I can't remember which. I, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just corner cutting for gamers. Uh, 
With password cracking, it's assumed you're going to be running 24-7, 365, and you want to spend the extra $50 on the real phantom heatsink assembly. Otherwise, you end up with fires. Uh, if you're buying like brand new cards, go with NVIDIA. If any of you remember, uh, have ever read about Bitcoin, uh, a few years ago, back when uh, GPU mining was a thing before the difficulty went up, everybody's like, buy AMD, buy AMD, buy AMD. Uh, the TLDR version is NVIDIA fixed uh, their architectural deficiencies, and at the same time, with the same, uh, with any of the Maxwell cards and newer, fixed that and cut the power usage in half of, of what AMD has. You'll get about the same performance, won't use as much electricity, which means no burnout PCI slots, no fires. You can, it, it just, it, everything runs cooler and it'll last longer. Uh, most of the beta, the bad thing though is, uh, there are only like three beta testers for NVIDIA cards as of the last time I checked. One of them is the developer, one of them is uh, a guy who made Ars Technica a few years back for making a 25 GPU rig that cracked, I forget how many billions of uh, hashes per second with NTLM. And then there's me. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of a sad state of affairs, but people are slowly starting as they retire old hardware to buy NVIDIA. Okay, this is the part, this is the part, if anything I do at Freaknik, uh, means that I get found murdered in a stairwell, it will be this slide right here and what I have to say. If you, ha if you have a Bitcoin mining rig that is just collecting dust and you want, <laughs> and you want to uh, use it for cracking passwords, you have to follow certain steps. Take every, first, take everything out of the milk crate or crates. Take the crates back to the gas station you stole them from. No! <laughs> yes unless you have another use for them. Okay. Then you separate everything into two piles. You take your reference cards, anything that was not cheesy, and put in one pile. You take everything else and put that in another pile. You build your cracking rig around the good pile and set the bad pile on fire because it's gonna burn anyways and you might as well own your own destiny. <laughs> okay, I uh, name dropped Dagmar earlier, I might as well give uh, substance to form. Uh, back, at, back in the days when dinosaurs roamed the earth, uh, he was given, uh, he was tasked with uh, cracking passwords internally at some financial firm he worked at. And he got 87% of them in about an hour. They were death hashes, so everything after eight characters got truncated. Uh, he, it, it was, uh, he used an old AMD CPU with uh, John the Ripper and some patches to, uh, for uh, specific optimizations. Uh, he got about 10,000 tries per second, and he only did dictionaries, and in a rather forward-looking move, he used multiple languages, which is something that the communities only really start to pay attention to in the last couple of years. All right, uh, for all my uh, benchmarking fun, I used Debian Wheezy with the uh, NVIDIA.com binary blog. Uh, and in, uh, uh, for my card, I used a GTX 650 Ti Boost, which, if anyone has heard me rant about it, it's hilariously inadequate for the job. It was like 150 bucks two years ago. It's, it works, but that's about it. And I already mentioned Battlefield Heroes. I went with that because there were so many uh, unique uh, MD5s. It says here 550K, but there's only like, there's like 423,000 uniques, which, that's still a lot. It was either this or the Syrian Electronic Army, and I, 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 I didn't feel like I didn't feel like dealing with that because there's only like five thousand of those. I didn't feel like that was significant. Oh, uh, I'll explain rule sets and mask files. I promise, but I just used the sock stuff until later when I decided to see what I could create on my own. Oh, uh, I used uh, the Rocky Dictionary which is really popular. It's kind of the go-to password cracking dictionary until someone else comes up with something and decides they're gonna publish it. Uh, Crackstation Human Only, uh, a guy who, uh, his name is Taylor Hornby. He published that in about 2010. He just found every dump he could with plain text passwords or cracked passwords and just alphabetized them. 
it's okay. It's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, taking a shotgun to a spider, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Holy Wow and Holy Wow 2. Now keep in mind, those are named Holy Wow and Holy Wow 2 because I originally did this talk at Lipscomb and they have certain uh, restrictions and guidelines about language. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is Lipscomb approved. Uh, I, did, I went to hashes.org and there, I forget the name of the other site, doesn't really matter, and grabbed, I basically did what Taylor Hornby did except I did it in 2014 instead of 2010 and uh, the difference between the two is uh, the original Holy Wow has a bunch of stuff from cracking competitions which turned out to be noisy and you'll see I got a few fractions of a percent higher by using uh, V2 over V1. All right, before I get into all that fun stuff though, I should probably talk about uh, attack types in general. This is like the common stuff people do. There's uh, dictionary attacks, which basically you bet the, the best way, in, instead of just using it like an actual literal dictionary, is to take uh, any passes from previous data breaches. But even when you do that, it's kind of hilariously inefficient. Your car will still run as hot, like the temperature will still be just as just the same, but it won't put it won't saturate the bandwidth on the card at all. It's pretty much. It's pretty much like space heater mode for a computer. But uh, one thing it's good for is validating found passwords. After, if you don't trust Hashcat to find things correctly, which I actually have countered that, and that's the whole reason I put also useful for validating founds. I mentioned I was a beta tester earlier, and trying to validate my founds is pretty much how I became one. Because I had, I had these weird, if you guys want to know about it, ask me later, but short version is I found a race condition that was adding, that was changing uh, capitalization and truncating the last two characters. And it was only, it only would, it only occur in like one in every 10,000 passwords. It was, yeah, it, it was really, it was, that was a lot of fun to figure out. Oh. Uh, and if I can put my 4D glasses on for just a minute and peer into the future, uh, dictionary attacks are going to be pretty much, once everybody moves to Bcrypt, are going to be pretty much the only way to even do anything in terms of password cracking. Because running, uh, let's say, if you're just going to do straight dictionary attacks against all of, for example, the Ashley Madison Bcrypt hashes, even though I know most of them are stored in some funky salted MD5 format, but anyways, it would take decades just to run the Rocky list against it and centuries to run like better attacks than that. So dictionaries are the future. Just keep that in mind. Anyways, Rocky found 28.25% in 12 seconds and Crackstation Human only got 35.79 in 19 seconds. Humanity's made some progress since uh, Dagmar made people at his financial firm cry. Uh, most people don't use passwords from hackers anymore, at least I don't think so. Uh, even though uh, people have gotten marginally better, Moore's Law has gotten way better. We, we'll, uh, we'll actually get to 87%, and I actually told myself I'm not going to stop until I get at least 87%. It just takes planning and having uh, silicone to throw at the problem. I'm not really going to talk about Combinator too much, except that it tries uh, every combo of words between two dictionaries. You can also do three dictionaries with uh, something from Hashcat Utils. And show of hands, who's heard of Diceware for making passwords? Okay, two people. Uh, just, watch, just watch the Diceware talk that's in the uh, YouTube link here. It's about a half hour. It's really comprehensive. The guy covers it well. Uh, and he also runs, uh, I think it's passwordsresearch.com, which is just like a repository of white papers about passwords for those who are into reading academic papers. Uh, another cool thing with combinators, you can apply rules to one half or the other half of the dictionaries, or both. And then there's a rule file called combinator.rule that'll add hyphens, special characters, and all that other fun stuff, instead of just catting things together. This is why I didn't bother testing. It would, I think I can just say it would have taken entirely too long and move on to the next slide. 
Rule-based attacks are a lot of fun and are pretty much the bane of everybody's existence right now, unless you're like me and crack passwords. You basically, essentially what rules do is change the, uh, whatever you feed it from the dictionary into something else and then tries that. And you can find a lot more stuff just doing that. You can also combine, like there are uh, multiple lead speak rules. Some of them have more rules than others. You can combine the, uh, one of the uh, simpler lead speak rule sets with something else and maybe find some combinations you wouldn't otherwise, maybe not. But of course the time grows exponentially as you do that. And another cool thing that Adam did is he made, uh, anybody familiar with John the Ripper or Passwords Pros? Passwords Pro already knows about rules. The rules are compatible. But if uh, John and Passwords Pro have, different, uh, have a different syntax for the same rule, I think John takes precedent, I think. Uh, I have some examples at the bottom. Just using a colon tries all lowercase password without modification. Uh, I think you guys can read. I'm guessing. Uh, I'm going to try to move along here. All of these passwords were from that uh, snarky white G uh, use GPU slide. All right, I really have to explain this because I had like five people tell me I needed to. My uh, anti uh, graphs are kind of esoteric. Oh. Uh, the dictionary specified in the title of each slide was used in combination with the rule sets in the name column. Sometimes a smaller rule set will find more passes than a bigger rule set with more computationally complex rule. And a real attacker will never even bother to go this hard unless their name happens to be Evil Mog, who has a cluster and doesn't care. All right, uh, Best64 is really awesome. A little over 59% in 10 seconds. Not bad. By contrast, you have dive dot rule at the top that took just under two hours to get 74%. I'm going, I'm going to kind of move past these. Like I said, these slides are going to be up for download, and you can even find older versions of them if you want, for those who actually want to analyze the data. Uh, I used uh, a little bit of Unix to calculate uh, what the percentage was. I took all of the uh, stuff Rocky found. I used finding uh, with Rocky and uh, the rules and got 76.86%. And then with uh, Crack Station Human Only and all the rules, I got 81.74. I'm not quite close to uh, meeting the Dagmar challenge, but 81.82% is not bad. I mean, the first 80% are all noobs and idiots anyway. It's the last 20% that's usually your more intelligent users just as a rule of thumb. Masking attacks. I actually had someone ask me about this, like here at Freakly. They wanted me to, uh, they were wanting to make sure I would talk about this because they didn't really understand it. Uh, nobody really does brute forcing anymore unless they're just clueless or a gray beard who hasn't kept up. And you know, maybe they got hit on the head with a lark and they've been asleep for the last 20 years. Oh. Uh, because we have such a rich body of knowledge with how uh, other people make passes, we can make uh, mask sets like this uh, string of question marks and uh, lowercase letters. That would crack uh, that uh, permutation of password. Do I, do I need to explain that in detail? Okay, other than I will, just for you, no one else. Uh, the, uh, I'm just going to, the question mark is understood, but U is uppercase, S is symbol, which would catch the uh, at symbol. Uh, lower L is, of course, lowercase, and then D is digit. You can, uh, anybody with, uh, anybody uh, working in an environment where there's a, a, a minimum complexity requirement for passwords? Okay. This is your jam right here. That, I mean, if a lot of people, okay, I have to have, uh, I have to have either uppercase, lowercase, or, uh, symbols or letters, I have to pick three out of four. Most losers are going to pick password and one, or some permutation thereof. So you could pretty much change the uh, S to an L, and you're good to go. And then, of course, increment and, or decrement the number of uh, question marks and Ls to saturate other character sets. Uh, you can also, if you feel like doing like 
other languages, you can set you can specify custom character sets for that. Maybe you're into maybe you need that, maybe you don't. It's there. Oh, I totally forgot about it. <laughs> I didn't kind of completely explain this. Okay, we're moving on. Sorry, folks. <laughs> All right. Uh, I you uh, Hashcat comes with uh, seven mask sets by the, well, yeah, like lists of masks by default. I only did the first three because by the time I got done, I realized the other three would take me forever. And I actually ran these at, like I would, uh, this was done last year at Freaknik. Like I would set it up, go to Freaknik, come home, another one would be finished. I'd start another one, go to bed, get up, start another one, go back to Freaknik. And then the, uh, I determined that uh, the fourth uh, Rocky rules uh, mask set was going to take entirely too long, and I was just like, ah, let's run the numbers. I met the Dagmar challenge, I decided to screw it. I'm moving on. Plus, uh, I, didn't feel, I didn't feel like uh, having as uh, much drama with NES that month. I figured it's, you know, winter's starting to come, electric bill's about to go up. Yeah. I had to slip in an intermission. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Uh, if, it, if anyone saw uh, Data Thrash on the schedule, he had to cancel out. He is to thank for that chip tune. I asked him on Twitter, I was like, hey, I'm doing this uh, presentation, ANSI art all throughout. I want to throw in a chip tune just to have the audio to go with the video. What would be a good intermission song? And he said, Trash 80, Girl from Intermission. And I listened to it, I loved it. So here it is. All right, now that I've gotten that out of the way, I was kind of, I was kind of at a, uh, I, I, I kind of paused for a couple of months, let the uh, NES rate go down, and I thought, what can I do next? So I downloaded the password analysis and cracking kit, fed both of the holy wow lists to it, and I generated uh, custom rule sets. Uh, the first rule set was uh, from the first holy wow was 50 gigabytes, and holy wow v2 generated a 15 gigabyte file. Uh, I sorted and ordered by popularity, and that only shrunk me from to 48 gigs and 12 gigs, respectively. And then, of course, you see where it starts with sort. For those of you, the uninitiated, it's a lot of Unix. That's pretty much the kind of environment I live in. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, like, I, I go to sleep and I see this kind of stuff spamming across a terminal in my brain. Uh, even with all, even with uh, all of that, after I combined everything, I still it only bumped me up to eighty eight point thirty one percent. So you can really tell I was really really getting into the land of dimension returns, and there are more spreadsheets. All right, this one requires a, an entirely different explanation. Uh, crack, uh, the third column, crack percentage, is uh, that's from before. Uh, this is just using rock. This is using the Rocky dictionary. Uh, V1 and V2 are both the holy wows. The only thing I changed was the uh, rules. Like uh, the V1 version of dive dot rule was the same number of lines, and I just wanted to see if I could do like line by line what was you know if I could exceed what Hashcat did. And like at the bottom, best 64, that was just hilariously terrible. That was, best 64 was hyper optimized in a competition from the community. So I didn't really expect to exceed it. And then here's the crack station human only version. Just a few uh, uh, fractions of a percent. Again, uh, V2 is a lot smaller, but better because it doesn't have trash from cracking competitions in it. 
Does anyone not understand the title? Show of hands. Okay, the few of you who raised hands, uh, go read the stories of H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, that's, all, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I decided uh, maybe I should do this with mask sets too. So I fed those. To, I, I fed the dictionaries to, uh, through packs of mask gen script, and I filtered out anything with, that had over less than a hundred thousand matches, just to fil just purge out the noise. Uh, some both of them had uh, really large sets, like uh, twenty-one lowercase. And uh, I think I, I think uh, 21 trillion years or uh, 518 undecillion combinations kind of tells the uh, sad song there. Uh, and there is not enough GPU power on this planet to equal 33.317 zeta hashes per second, which is what it would take to try all of those in six months. Uh, if is no fault in here? Okay, no. Uh, him and I were laughing on the phone about these numbers. He was cr he was feeding them some exotic spreadsheet he has and reading them back to me. We were giggling like a couple of schoolgirls about it at like 3 a.m. in the morning. We're weird people. Get over it. All right, I I decided. Oh, hey, I'm a Unix fan. I can just fake all of this. So. Uh, <laughs> It, it, assu assuming I can uh, crack passwords past the heat death of the universe, Holywell V1 would find just over 96%, and V2 would find right over 90 Now, what's really funny here is uh, lots of intelligent planning will lead to even better cracking in less time. And I say that because uh, Battlefield has over 98% cracked, and it's only been out since 2011. That was another reason I went with it that I think I neglected to mention earlier. Pretty much everything was found so I could validate it more easily. I figured the chances of me finding something new were really abysmal, and that turned out to be correct. Now, uh, assume, stepping back into reality, if, I, if a, a real attacker were doing this, and they, they would probably start with best 64, then maybe move on to something a little more complicated, but then they would take everything they found and run all the attacks again, which might net them a few more passes, probably in single-digit numbers, just from my personal experience. Or they do the idea Dagmar had in the 90s and the community's having now and use dictionaries for alternate languages. There's also keyboard walks like ASDF and QWERTY, and there are actually scripts out there for doing just that, like generating dictionaries with keyboard walks of specific lengths. Uh, or they would use a, a rather glorious sounding project called WordHound, which what that does, okay, let's say you have, uh, I don't know, let's go with Battlefield. I'm sure there was a website for that. I'm not even sure what the hell Battlefield was, but we're going to move. Seriously, I don't. I'm, I, I didn't even bother. I just cared about the MD5s. But I'm sure there was a website for it. You would point WordHound at the website. It would scrape all the words and pull out the important ones like for example, Battlefield, if you remember on the top 10 slide, that was one of the top 10 passes. And you could generate, a, you, yeah, it was. And pretty much any specific thing is like that. Every, every site has some common thing that's related to the site that like with Battlefield, they used Battlefield, or with Ashley Madison, they used different parts of anatomy as common passes. Which was one of the only reasons I didn't put this on here, because I still wanted to keep it Lipscomb approved, even though that was April and who cares now. Penis! <laughs> Wait, is aesthetics in here? Did he come from Berlin? No. Okay, he's like the only person I know who would do outbursts like that. That's why I had, <laughs> that's why I had to ask. I didn't know if he had surprised everyone. Uh, then, the, uh, then there's uh, Mises, which... Uh, a guy who goes by Toxic has done uh, a few talks about. It's basically just inserting words into other words, and I kind of helpfully color-coded that so I don't have to explain it in words. Uh, pretty much all that's left is uh, pack analysis credits, and then you guys ask me any questions, and I am hopefully able to answer them. Uh, I just color-coded this because I can. There's no specific reason for it. I thought the presentation was kind of bland and could use some sprucing up. As you can see here, eight character passwords are uh, 
very, very common, followed by nine character passwords. In my personal experience, most people tend to pick between six and 11 uh, character passwords. After that, it just seems to really fall off the cliff. Well, in this case, six to 10, because the users were slightly dumber than your average users. Oh, uh, this is just like character sets used. M most people use lower alphanumeric. That's something you can look at from a, a, this is kind of getting like a big picture view of where you might want to target masks if you have the time and GPU cycles to do that. 53% is kind of depressing. Uh, this is one of my favorite slides. I, I love this one so much. Uh, these are the most complicated passes that only use like all digits, all lowercase, and so on. You'll notice that uh, all upper is just, they went along the top of the keyboard uh, letter keys and just, that's a keyboard walk, folks. That's what, if you didn't understand that earlier, that is just one big honking keyboard walk. Then my personal favorite is the, per, is the loser who decided to use uh, 12 asterisks because he wanted to be the champion uh, defender against shoulder surfers, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it didn't save him. Oh, uh, simple masks, I kind of already explained that. This is just like a, another way of going over it. I'm just gonna move on. Here's advanced masks. This is like actual stuff if you uh, are running pack, you can just awk out the correct column and just make you a mask file. All right, uh, I was advised uh, before going to do this talk somewhere else that I should do some blue team stuff. So here's the obligatory blue team slide. If you're a developer, use password hashing algorithms like Decrypt and Escrypt. Almost all your other options are riddled with peril. Managers, keep firing developers until they understand the above. <laughs> and if you can't fire the developer, move them to janitorial duty or the mailroom. Keep doing that until you get developers with a clue. Users, randomly generate all passwords. Store in either a password manager if you're a mere mortal or an encrypted text file if you're a wizard. Uh, in any case, use a good passphrase. Maybe look at Diceware. The Intercept has come out and said Diceware is good enough for them. So maybe they probably know what they're talking about since their primary adversary is the NSA and other undesirables of that nature. Uh, when you have to use a memorable password, something like that would be good. And then just as an aside, uh, who here uh, does full disk encryption on their own setup? Woo! All right. Did you guys know that Lux uh, does 4,096 rounds of SHA-1 by default on the password for the Lux container? You can adjust that. It, 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 it's, kind of, it's kind of scary, especially if you have data that's not backed up and you adjust it on, you know, you're going to start, screw it, I'm going to do it live on production gear with no, with no safety net at all. I, I did that. I, I tested it in a VM first and then I did it. So I did kind of cheat. But uh, your options are pretty much SHA-1 or SHA-256. So I went to SHA-256 and then just because I'm a fan of internet culture, I did 9,001 rounds. Over 9,000? Yes. And then, the, and then the scouter broke. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the tell them what, what you told them slide. Uh, we talked, I, I talked about the uh, basics of hashing algorithms. Then uh, dropped some beginner level hashcat info. Gave way too many benchmarks. Then we had the tasteful chiptune intermezzo, courtesy of Trash80 and Data Thrash. More benchmarks some uh, half-baked analysis, and then a little bit of blue taping at the end. Here are the uh, references. I mentioned this talk was online. You can get it at the, at the very bottom. Uh, these exact slides are not online. Like, I added the uh, line about firing developers and a couple other slides before coming here. But yeah, all of this is good stuff. Here are all the people who helped in one way or another. I'm just going to move on. I, I, I'll wait like, I'll pause like five seconds. If someone watches this on YouTube and wants to grab the names, they can. Okay, moving on. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, if you want to uh, reach out to me for some reason, whether it's you're sending questions, comments, death threats, and or world domination conspiracies, 
you can find me at that email address and there's my PGP key, ID, and fingerprint. I'm also on Twitter and GitHub if you feel like uh, harassing me via either of those. Question. Um, don't you think password cracking is somewhat dead due to, um, or for anything of importance due to maximum login attempts and the captions? No, that, uh, okay, that's for online cracking. Offline cracking is some site gets owned and the database gets downloaded. And you don't even have to be connected to the internet at that point. You can pull the network cable out and start cracking the hashes. Okay. And then, yeah, and then once you've got the legit password, then you can plug the network cable back in and take little Johnny's Minecraft account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Johnny! Fuck <laughs> him! Fuck Johnny. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know if you have any familiarity with the uh, batch crack script. I do not. Um, it's basically almost kind of an idiot proof way to do like the easy stuff artist. So the, it does the masking attacks that kind of look like this. Oh, nice. Um, my, my, my question is, do you know of anything that does kind of like an idiot proof guide to this? Because what happens is, is depending on the complexity of the, the hash, makes the timetable go ridiculous. Oh, math, yeah. Math gets hard, right? So, oh, yeah. You know, you get a you know, you know, shot one, okay, fine, you can do whatever you want, run all the rules, run all the things. But exactly. Then, you know, like a WPA, this one key is going to take forever to do it. So my question is, do you know have any suggestions for people like an idiot proof guy to just run a script if it outputs, you know, you know, fifty percent of your passwords, great. Because a lot of that, a lot of that stuff is very, uh, you know, it's very niche depending on the client. But a lot of it is just like, boom, I want to try these basic, you know, this this type of angle like this, up to eight characters or seven characters, and then I'm going to go do whatever else in the rules. And that's kind of what I've been trying to do is have the modified batch crack script that includes the rules. But then when you get into different hashes, it just gets ridiculous. So is there like a guide on how to approach approach it from each like any proof way? Um, or the clo the closest thing I can think of offhand, and this is going to sound kind of conceited or whatever. I wrote like some private bat uh, bash scripts just for like DevOpsing the whole uh, cracking for this. Like I originally did this presentation with presenting it here in mind. And I wanted to reproduce it exactly the same way every time with each rule set. I wrote I wrote a couple of scripts for that, but it's not like they're really good enough to release. I mean, it's just like one-liners basically. It, but if anybody, but if anybody's done like a uh, an actual effort of doing something that's worth using by multiple people, I'm not aware of it. But if you find something like that, let me know. Well, the the hashtag guy is just laughing. Like, is there an idiot proof script I can run for? Oh, 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 yeah, the, the, those guys are rude as hell. It's a, yeah. Xanadrill's my favorite. He's like the absolute rudest. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll think of you maybe. Because that, the, that page that you had percentage is based on the maxing attacks. Yeah. Like that, stuff like that that's past like eight characters. Like past six or seven or eight characters, what is my max going to look like from the easiest to largest? Because I'll run it for a day or two. And then, you know, I'm running it honestly on personal hardware. I'm yeah. not going to sit there and let it run because, you know, I got to crap I got to be on my personal hardware. So, some kind of oh, automated script. I have, I have, okay, a, I have a pro tip for that. I have a pro tip for that. Use the W flag, like dash W space one. And you can you can uh, even watch movies while uh, the box cracks passwords. It'll still it'll run almost as hard, but it'll give you just enough I/O from the video card where you can actually do other stuff. Is that workload flag or something? I, I think that I think that's the long version of it's probably something like that. I'm not going to guess at that because I don't know off the minus top of my head. W, I'm sorry. Yeah, minus W, and then you can, it's got like you can do uh, one, two, and maybe three, but one one is awesome. Any other questions? Oh, I still have some time. You don't, okay. <laughs> this is free kid. It's kind of required. I, I, I had originally thought about doing, like, paying some guy on Fiverr to do, like, a fake movie trailer. But 
I, just, I didn't do that. 